I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't play the game. I can't. But you don't need to play the game. It's not a game. Just you need to stay here in this house. I should have been a footman. Grounds. I should have been a footman, and maybe that. So That's quite like, interesting because my background, I should have been a footman, but I was lucky enough to get invited to a party. Because I need to have my pulse on everything. When the hostess gets wind of their budding romance, she is not amused. But for a lady's companion in the 19th century, I do feel her behaviour is totally inappropriate. So would you like a written report, ma'am? Or I just know, a no, verbal no, no, no. report? Or if he's behaving naughtily with somebody, I need to know um, and warn him that it's not, um, I think the word is commensurate, with his position and it could jeopardise, you know, everything for him. Hello, Miss Rogers. Have you been asked to stand there with Mr Captain Robinson? No, I realised taking a walk and he was as well, so... Your position is such that it would be very embarrassing for Captain Robinson to come and have a walk with you. It would compromise you and be, make life difficult for you. OK. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that parasol actually isn't big enough for you. Oh, because okay. just now you were standing with the sun showing on your back. Oh. I'm getting a bit bored with people not trying hard enough. People need a jolt and to be reminded that they need to think about what they're doing here. The only escape from this suffocating life was the great outdoors, something that was becoming fashionable for the first time. Country estates were being landscaped into untamed wildernesses, the best were equipped with that disciple of nature, the hermit. I've been a hermit in sort of in all but name in various occasions in my life. So I fell into the possession of a huge Red Indian tent that you have a big fire in the middle of. Um, when I was in my very early 20s, I used to live in it every summer in various people's uh, land. And uh, the people who owned the land used to uh, come up and, and visit with, uh, with friends sort of before dinner with a drink in their hands. And it was, it was exactly sort of the way that the hermit was shown off, you know, treated like a proper, well-loved uh, family pet. Artist Zebedee Helm is following in a humble tradition of lovelorn poets, philosophers and religious men who chose the hermit life. Quite rude and simple. But there's enough there, I think, to uh, support a man in the wilds for two months. Advertisements for hermits often stipulated that they grow their hair and fingernails, take port with their master weekly, and jump out of bushes to scare the ladies. I'm extremely jealous of the people living in the house with their lovely food and their fancy clothes, but I enjoy this style of life, and so I think it's important for me to try and make them as jealous as possible of what I've got. You know, you, you want what you can't have, or you think you do. Um, and that's what I represent, yeah, a wild heathen fantasy. The worship of nature was considered good for the soul. The more tempestuous, the better. We have an example of Josiah Eaton, who, again, moving the... The storm is a chance to show off their Regency bravado, essential training for the forthcoming contest. Fancy a box? Yeah. But the power of nature has made little impression on Captain Robinson. I want to go home. And if I can't go home, I'll just go mad. It's like the day's here are really cool, and, um, we do really cool stuff, and then we have this three-hour meal, and depending on who you're sitting next to, it could be quite a nice experience or the most drawn-out, long, boring experience ever. It's like coming home from a, a like, good day at work and watching the same video every night, and like, eventually it just like, gets really boring. 
The other outsider, Miss Francesca, is last in line for the bath. She's obliged to use a stranger's dirty water. Okay. Oh, whose bath water was it? <laughs> it's very dirty. <laughs> Do I just literally get here? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so weird. It's actually weird at getting in with a chemise. If I don't, if I don't say yes to this bath in bath water, then I won't get another one. So I don't know. I like, can't be bothered to get upset about little things. It's more sort of the big things that upset me. Like Captain Robinson today was upset. Me. I pretty much spend every evening with him, and so I'll, that would be awful. You know, it'd just be such a shame to lose him. It would be gutting. <laughs> There's no chance of losing Captain Glover. He's on a mission. I think we will become gentlemen. I think we will take a lot of these lessons on board, embrace them, and we will change. It is that difference between a gentleman and a, and a dandy or a man of fashion. A gentleman doesn't act the part, he is the part. And I think that's what we're starting to learn. You breathe, sir. I can not breathe. <laughs> I mean, this is all alpha male, alpha female stuff, isn't it? It's not just the best looking, but the healthiest and the fittest and the most sharpest of mind. And a lady will find that attractive. You know, it's basic instinct, isn't it? Stand still! <laughs> that evening, the hostess agrees to a game of outdoor sardines. And events take a turn that could change Captain Robinson's fortunes forever. Three, two, one, go! Four, five, six. And off you go. Lovely. Full start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. The guests head for the bushes in the hope of enjoying some forbidden intimacy. My idea of sardines is when I was a teenager and you were really hoping that, you know, you might be squeezed close to um, the, the boy that, you know, you were fancying. Making the most of the opportunity, Captain Robinson seeks out Miss Francesca. And there, abandoning all hope of social advancement, he makes an offer. It's just been announced. You do have to, it's a very early stage, but the intention is there is a, an understanding between Captain Robinson and Miss Francesca. But we need to. Of a marital type, but of course it has to be cleared with uh, Mrs. Rogers, who's sort of, and Mr. Goldbarns, who are kind of guardians, employees. You'd have a wedding. Fantastic. This, uh, this man is a fantastic man. Cheers, man. The Regency world revolved around engagement, the defining moment of a person's life. Bagging an army captain is a step up the social ladder for Miss Francesca. <laughs> but the hapless captain has let his heart rule his head. I don't know if this is ethical or this is allowed to happen or any of this is allowed to be done, but and we get brilliant. And he said that if he could marry her, then he'd be very happy to spend the next nine weeks here. Um, I always wanted a Las Vegas style wedding. <laughs> and um, Miss Francesca, will you marry me? <laughs> It's the morning after Miss Francesca's engagement to Captain Robinson. It's time to get up, Mum. Today, the men are hunting rabbits. Missed it. The hawks are soon abandoned in favour of a liquid breakfast. 